Hello everyone, so in honor of Ramadan starting this weekend, I decided that I would be making various videos discussing various topics in Islam. So today's topic is the role of women in Islam. So we are going to take a look at Sahih al-Bukhari and see what the Prophet thought about women. So I am in chapter 6, number 104. Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudari. Once Allah's messenger went out to the Musala to offer the prayer of Eid al-Adha, or al-Fatir prayer. Then he passed by the women and said, O women, give alms, as I have seen that the majority of the dwellers of hellfire were you women. They asked, Why is it so, O Allah's messenger? He replied, You curse frequently and are ungrateful to your husbands. I have not seen anyone more deficient in intelligence and religion than you. A cautious, sensible man could be led astray by some of you. The women said, O oh Allah's messenger, what is deficient in our intelligence and religion? He said, Is not the evidence of two women equal to the witness of one man? They replied in the affirmative. He said, This is the deficiency in her intelligence. Isn't it true that a woman can neither pray nor fast during her menses? The women replied in the affirmative. He said, this is the deficiency in her religion. So in essence, the prophet just said that women are the majority of dwellers in the hell fire because they are deficient in intelligence and religion. Now, is this how God really feels about women? After all, if majority of hell is full of women, then why would he create us in the first place? Let's take a look at the Bible and see what Jesus says about women. The first part of scripture I want to talk about is in the book of John chapter 8 when a woman was caught in the act of adultery. This is verse 3. The religion scholars and Pharisees led in a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They stood her in plain sight of everyone and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught red-handed in the act of adultery. Moses in the law gives orders to stone such a person. What do you say? Jesus says, the sinless one among you go first, throw the stone. Hearing that, they walked away one after another, beginning with the oldest. The woman was left alone. Jesus stood up and spoke to her, woman, where are they? Does anyone condemn you? She said, no one, master. He said, neither do I. Go on your way, and from now on, don't sin. This was a woman who was caught in her sin and dragged out by all of the religious leaders. And Jesus says, let the first one of you who is sinless throw the stone. None of them were sinless, so none of them had any right to condemn her. According to the law, she should have been stoned. If it were Muhammad, he would have stoned her. But since it's Jesus, he looks at her with grace and with mercy and forgiveness in his eyes and says, no one condemns you from now on, do not sin. The last part of scripture I want to look at is in the book of Isaiah, um, chapter 43. It's one of my favorite parts in all scripture, and it reads, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. That is the Lord's heart towards women. God loves us. He's chosen us. He's called us by name. We belong to him. There's nothing we can do to earn his love. It's a free gift. So whoever's watching this, whether you're a man or a woman, just know that God loves you. He created you. He formed you in your mother's womb, and he cares so deeply about your life. You are valued, you are chosen, and you are loved. My dear Muslim friends, I'm so glad that you found this video and you saw this testimony from this young lady who left Islam. Now, the reason why she left Islam is that she read Islam's books. She read the Hadith, and she saw what Muhammad's attitude towards her was. And then she found out about Jesus, and she compared the two, and she noticed something different, that the God of the Bible had a different attitude towards her 
than Allah and Muhammad does. I can think of no greater verse in the Bible that sums up this thought, and it's John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This verse shows God's attitude towards you. And God's attitude towards the young lady that left Islam, that God loves you, and you are special to God. You bear His image, and God loves you so much that He would send His only Son, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, to die in your place, and He rose from the dead, canceling your sin debt when you put your trust and faith in Him. She also realized God's attitude towards sin and that God doesn't like sin. In fact, sin is so ugly to God, you can look at the cross and you can see how sin treats the world. You can see how sin infects the world because Jesus died a really horrible death for your sin. See, Jesus was God incarnate. He was God and human at the same time. And that human part of him, the human flesh, died on the cross. But his divinity never ceased. He never stopped being God. But it shows that God is just and God is holy and God must, must punish sin. God cannot simply overlook sin on account of how good you are, how well you have behaved. God can't overlook your sin. It must be punished. And then she saw God's attitude towards believers. And those who would repent and put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ would have their sins forgiven and they would have everlasting life with the Father. You see, when you get saved, my dear Muslim friends, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, comes to indwell your heart and He changes you from the inside out. To become more like Jesus. You see, God sent His Son to die for you. That shows His love towards you. And this young lady that left Islam understood that point, and it really hit home in her heart that God loves her. And God loves you too, my dear Muslim friend. And to prove that this message is true, that Jesus is the Lord who died for your sins, he rose from the dead. He conquered death, hell, sin, and the grave on your behalf. Now it's simple, my dear Muslim friends. You just must repent, leave Islam, and put your trust in Jesus to save you. It's that simple. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Don't delay, my dear Muslim friends. Choose Jesus today. Believe in him. And if you do that, my dear Muslim friend, I promise you that you will never regret it.